Welcome to the public hearing for the State Road 25 U.S. Highway 441 design project for proposed transportation improvements from State Road 35, also known as Baseline Road, to State Road 200, also known as Southwest 10th Street in Marion County, Florida. The purpose of this public hearing is to share information with the general public about the proposed improvements. The public hearing also serves as an official forum, providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. Public participation at this hearing is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. This public hearing is being held in accordance with Florida Statute 339155 regarding public transportation. There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need and proposed design plans. Third, a formal comment period following this presentation, where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements at the microphone, or you may provide your comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. We ask that you limit your verbal comments to two minutes to allow time for everyone who would like to speak. The project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. This public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on this slide. In November 2010, Florida Senate Bill 1842 was enacted, which requires the department to hold a public hearing whenever modifications to property access are proposed along a state highway. Hearings must be held 180 days prior to finalization of the design of the project. This public hearing was advertised consistent with all federal and state requirements. Letters were sent to 25 elected officials, 18 government partners, 12 agencies, 16 businesses, and 1,739 property owners and interested persons. A newspaper ad was published in the Ocala Star Banner on Sunday, July 28, 2019, and again on August 4, 2019. An ad was also published in the Florida Administrative Register on August 7, 2019. Title VI was enacted as part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. It prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status in programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation District 5 office or the Tallahassee office. This contact information is also provided on a sign displayed near the sign-in table. The purpose of this project is to rehabilitate the existing roadway through the project limits along US 441 from Baseline Road to State Road 200. The project also includes constructing turn lanes and modifying some median openings from southeast 102nd place to north of southeast 98th lane. The proposed typical section between southeast Hames Road 
and Southeast 110th Street in the City of Bellevue will be modified to remove on-street parking. It will consist of two travel lanes in each direction, with a two-way left turn lane in the center and a bicycle lane on both sides of the roadway. The existing concrete sidewalk, curb, and gutter will remain. Some existing concrete driveways will be reconstructed to remove tripping or vehicle hazards throughout the project corridor. For FDOT standards, on-street parking is only permitted where posted speeds are under 35 miles per hour. When automobiles are parked along the side of the road, it minimizes the sight distance for vehicles moving in the travel lanes. Therefore, on-street parking will be removed to allow room for bicycle lanes. Impacted businesses have additional parking off the roadway. Starting with a new sidewalk, numerous sidewalk gaps between 110th Street and Southeast First Avenue will be filled with a six foot wide proposed sidewalk on the west side only. In the two and a half mile segment between Southeast 102nd Place and Southeast 80th Street, a 12 foot wide shared use path is proposed. The right of way varies with a minimum of 200 feet. The existing typical sections on US 441 within the project limits will be modified to extend left and right turn lanes at various locations. Necessary roadside improvements will include signing and pavement marking and guardrail upgrades. Bicycle facilities will be provided within the right-of-way where possible. The project also includes access management or median modifications, including the addition of two mid-block crossings. Lighting at the intersections will be improved. Two additional concrete bus pads will be added for bus stops, and the sidewalk in some areas will be reconstructed. No additional right-of-way is anticipated for these improvements. The corridor is an active SunTran bus route. Improvements and maintenance of traffic will be coordinated with them. Bus stop locations are being reviewed and proposed improvements will be affirmed by SunTran prior to constructing additional transit-related features. New concrete bus pads will be constructed south of Southwest 13th Street and north of Southwest 12th Street. Pedestrian improvements include reconstructing sidewalks in areas where it is needed, and new sidewalk will be constructed in areas where there are gaps. Curb ramps will be reconstructed and crosswalks and stop bars will be provided at intersections. Lighting will be improved and or provided at signalized crosswalks. Warning services will be installed at some locations to detect pedestrian movements and alert drivers. Detectable warning surfaces will also be installed on the sidewalk ramps at signalized intersections to alert pedestrians with vision disabilities of the crossing. Pedestrian crashes account for approximately 15% of all traffic fatalities annually, and over 75% of these occur at non-intersection locations. At the request of the City of Bellevue, a pedestrian safety study was conducted to evaluate potential mid-block crossing locations between Southeast 57th Avenue to south of Southeast 110th Street. Two locations were identified, the first west of 53rd Court and the second at Brown Avenue. Mid-block crossings are intended to calm traffic and decrease conflicts, reduce crossings at unpredictable locations, improve pedestrian connectivity, and facilitate pedestrian crossing activity to a safe and predictable location. 
Refuge islands allow pedestrians to cross approaching traffic in one direction at a time. New drainage structures will be constructed as needed. At some locations, curb inlets will be relocated to accommodate pedestrian ramp reconstruction, and the existing curb inlet tops will be replaced with a manhole top. In some areas, the existing drainage ditch will be piped in order to widen the turn lane for the proposed sidewalks or bicycle lanes. Utility companies have been contacted and the FDOT is coordinating with each company to minimize impacts and avoid construction delays. The project team will coordinate with emergency responders throughout project design and construction to ensure normal operations will not be impacted. Next, we'll discuss access management. Access management is the planning and control of the location, spacing, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, and street connections to a roadway. Access management designates where and how vehicles enter and exit a roadway, helps protect public investment in roadways, and improves public safety by preserving mobility, reducing delays, and minimizing crashes. The illustration shows an accident that could have been prevented by closing the median or providing a barrier where the westbound automobile is trying to turn into or cross the eastbound travel lane. Changes in access management have specific requirements. Per Florida Senate Bill 1842, the department shall hold at least one public hearing in the jurisdiction where the project is located and receive public input to determine how the project will affect access to businesses and the potential economic impact of the project on the local business community. This public hearing meets that requirement. For this project, a pedestrian safety study was conducted for this section between Southeast 110th Street and Hames Road. This section of the project is currently an Access Class 5. The Access Class will be the same after the proposed improvements are constructed. Within the project corridor, there are three access management classifications. Class 6 from Southeast 10th Avenue to the northern end of the project. This is a lower capacity or minor collector road in an urban area. Class 3 from Southeast 102nd Place to Southeast 10th Avenue is a high capacity road or principal arterial road in a natural area. Class 5 from the southern end of the project to Southeast 102nd Place is a moderate capacity road or major collector road in a suburban or commercial area. The proposed access management changes will include mid-block crossings to add safety for pedestrians. A portion of the turn lane will be replaced with a raised curb median island or refuge where pedestrians can stop to make sure it is safe to cross before they proceed to the other side of the road. The proposed access management changes on this segment of the project include removing the existing median opening just north of Southeast 100th Place in front of the Moose Lodge. A southbound left turn lane will be constructed to allow vehicles to turn onto Southeast 100th Place through a directional median opening. The existing northbound left turn lane will be shifted to the south to maintain vehicle storage length. The FDOT is coordinating individually with the property owners that will be directly impacted by these changes. 
you can download a copy of the Florida Department of Transportation's Access Management Brochure for more information. Go to the website at www.fdot.gov and type Access Management Brochure in the search box at the upper right-hand corner of the home page. This project has an approximate 28-month design schedule. We are currently moving into the Phase 3 plans. The plans will be completed and submitted to the Florida Department of Transportation by spring of 2020, and the project will be let for construction in summer 2020, which means that is when bids from contractors are opened. Construction would start some months afterward. For more information about this project, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website is the FDOT's living platform to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. You are encouraged to visit this website, which contains the links to easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the project. Once you have accessed the project website, you will be able to view more information on the project, including project contact information. You will also be able to access project files such as this presentation. Type the project number 439238-1 or 43568-6-1 in the search box at the top of the page, then click on Go. When the new page opens, click on the project file name. We encourage you to share your comments with us. There are many different ways you can submit your comments. Provide your comments directly to the court reporter. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table. Take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form. Email your comments to one of the FDOT project managers, Daniel Simpson at daniel.simpson at dot.state.fl.us or Elio Joseph at eliod.joseph at dot.state.fl.us. Use the Ask a Question button on the CFL Roads website under the Project Manager's contact information. All comments received or postmarked by August 26, 2019 will become part of the official public record for this hearing. If you have questions or would like more information, you may contact FDOT Project Manager Daniel Simpson or FDOT Project Manager Elio Joseph by mail, telephone, or email. Thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to attend this public hearing. We will now call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. If you have not filled out a speaker card, but wish to speak, please hold up your hand and a member of the project team will bring one to you. When your name is called, please come forward. Then state your name and address into the microphone. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. Again, the project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. <laughs> 